we joined the Covenant, we took an oath. According to our station, all without exception. On the blood of our fathers, on the blood of our sons, we swore to uphold the true Halo lore. Even to our dying breath, those at Paramount Plus, the heretics, worthy of neither pity nor mercy. Even now, they use bungees creations to broadcast their lives. We shall review their shitty adaptation and into dust and continue our march to glorious salvation. And we're back to talk about episode five and six. How you doing? Episode five takes this show in a direction I was not expecting at all. This show is going down a path I can't follow. Not because I liked the show and don't anymore, obviously, but because it went in a direction I'm legitimately struggling to understand. In other words, I can't follow it. Even while making this video, I'm confused and just want to ask the writers, why? After watching episode two, I told my coworker, if they waste the whole season on shitty dialogue and incoherent drama while leaving the fall of Reach to happen in one or two episodes, I'm going to be pissed. Well, I was half right because they did do the fall of Reach in one episode. They just decided to do it on episode four and move on to a completely different plotline. Well, that same co-worker told me he watched episode 5 and 6 twice to try and understand just what in the floopy hell is going on in this universe. He's still confused. Hats off to that guy. There's no fucking way in hell I'm watching this shit again. I took my notes, and we're just going to try and figure this out together. I really like Halo Reach the game, and felt very passionate about ripping this show a new asshole for making episode 4 a steaming pile of shit. A breakdown of one episode of TV ended up being my longest video. After watching episode 5 and 6, I am so disinterested, even from a memeing point of view, in what's happening in this plot. Because so much nothing happens in 5 and 6, I'm combining them into one video, because I would probably bore even the most interested person to sleep with a detailed breakdown of each. Episode 5 basically puts us in a position where Reach has fallen, and we are now going to do other stuff. Because the world building in this show is a damn joke, I never really got Last Ship Off the Planet vibes at the end of Episode 4 or the beginning of Episode 5, like I did when the Pillar of Autumn left Reach at the end of Halo Reach the video game. But I guess Planet Reach is done for. Okay, let's get this retardation over with. We kick things off with a direct continuation at the end of Episode 4. Our intrepid heroes are trying to retreat while having a lame action scene with some Covenant forces. John is dazed and confused after having been shot. I know I touched on this in my episode 4 breakdown, but almost every single action scene has shots of our heroes shooting their guns at Covenant forces that we just have to use our imagination for. John Halo is now shooting with Soren at imaginary targets, so I guess he's okay enough to move around and shoot a gun. He'd be pretty well off if he still had his armor on, but... Whatever. All of the Covenant forces stop shooting so that a Hammer Brute can fall through the ceiling and engage in combat with them. Since none of our Spartans have Mjolnir armor, I guess this is the end of our good guys. Oh wait, Soren's wife showed up, magically, in the nick of time, with a spaceship. Good thing she knew exactly where they were, but convenience is something these writers love with a burning passion. She angles the spaceship to where Quan can start lighting up Covenant forces with a minigun that she is just simply standing there and holding. No bipod or tripod. Suspension of disbelief. Immediately after getting everybody on the spaceship, Riz, with two pistols and no armor, decides to go back and grab Vanek's body. With her first mag dump, she's absolutely out of ammo, but somehow she just keeps shooting. The shooting here, as in the cameras, was all wrong. Initially, our heroes were shooting from behind cover and desperately falling back. But now Riz, with no armor, is able to re-engage with all of the imaginary Covenant forces all by herself. The area that Vanek's body is laying in is already Covenant real estate. She's not getting in there without her Spartan armor. I'm kidding. Of course she is fine, because nothing matters. There's a scene where John is shaking his head no, and it's in slow motion, and she's looking at him like, I'm gonna fucking do it. This is the kind of scene you would expect her to die. It's shot in a way that's like, yeah, She's dead here. It's quiet for a second, and then she emerges from the smoke, carrying Vanek's body while plasma bolts are flying all over the place. She is the only target that these jackals need to shoot, but they're acting like Disney cannon stormtroopers. Actually, 
I don't even know what kind of alien is shooting at her, because all of the jackals we saw had wrist blades, all of the elites left with the Arbiter, and we didn't see a single grunt in the last episode. We actually haven't seen a single grunt this season. I'm gonna pop the top off a can of whoop ass! Game over! Told ya, chicken! Focus all fire on the demon! He was my best friend! I should have been my leadership class! So, unless the Jackals are deciding to pull pistols out now, when they didn't feel like doing that earlier, nah, just forget it. None of this matters. It doesn't make sense. What does matter is, how the fuck are they missing? She's also acting like his body is super heavy, but I remind you, she is a Spartan. She would be able to sprint with that fucker on her back. Why can't they nail a single detail in this show? She gets shot in the back, and I wrote down, I hope she dies. Sorry, Riz, but they wrote you to be a really shitty character. So every time you're in trouble, I just hope you die. We got a little shot of Covenant ships glassing Reach City, and we fuck off the planet. We then have our intro, and I'm not sure why they always have John Halo getting his suit of armor on when that motherfucker clearly hates wearing it. Oh, because everything about this show is a bait and switch. Now to avoid going back and forth, I'm going to follow the John people storyline and then the Covenant stuff. So Riz is unconscious, and John Halo's pretty fucked up, and they're floating in space in their spaceship licking their wounds. John and Halsey get into it for a little bit, and John says some really cringe shit like, real humans have lives, we're not real people. Timeline-wise, John's been out for two days. Then Dr. Halsey gives him some more medication, and he goes to sleep for another day. Or he went to sleep for three more days, I'm not really sure what the timeline is. But we're at three to five days here. This is when I realized that the fall of Reach was one episode long, when it could have easily been one to two seasons. And now we're going to go hang out on a planet called Illyria. At one point, the subtitle said, John Halo grunts. And it made me miss the grunts, since we haven't seen any this season. John Halo meets up with Quan, who asks him if he's going to look at Vanek's body, to which he says Spartans never die, and it was really weird and awkward, and cringe, and stupid. Sorry, let's keep going. It's definitely some forced drama between Quan and John, but it's been three to five days since this whole Reach situation happened, and I feel like we should be worrying about decomposition. I feel like they should just give him a sailor's burial. I don't understand why that wouldn't be the first option. Later in the episode, they burn him, but I think I would have just launched him into space. I mean, that makes more sense. You don't want to have a body decomposing for three to five days in what looks like a very tight spaceship. We get on Illyria, and they rush Riz to get some surgery and medical attention. John is standing out in the cold, waiting for her to recover. Quan comes back up to him to ask if they're going to bury Vanek's body. I don't know how long it's been at this point, but they absolutely need to do something with that body. Unless you're telling me Spartans in this universe don't decompose. I highly doubt that's a thing. I'm just memeing. Let's wrap up the John, Riz, Quan, and Dr. Halsey storyline because there's not much left here. John wants to get revenge on the Oni people that abandoned Reach, specifically Perengoski. He tells Riz it's time to go get him. And Riz says she's staying on the planet. She's all done. She's got no more fight left in her. And John Halo got super weird about asking her to stand up. She was legit struggling to stand at all and he was being super emotional and talking about how Vanek died. Like, it didn't matter that billions of people are dead. But then after they have a little powwow, he's fine and he leaves her there. So that's that, I guess. Pretty low bar here, but Soren and his wife's storyline is the most interesting in this episode. They're trying to find their son, so they go to what looks like a type of shop that everybody stops at after they arrive at this planet because I guess everybody just arrives at the exact same spot on this planet that looks like a desolate wasteland. He gives them a location where they can go find their son. They go there. They meet the two people that supposedly took him in. They get really weird about it, saying he's their son now. Soren sits down, and it looks like he's gonna go like dark pirate Spartan mode on him. Like, I'll take care of this, and he's just gonna walk in and close the door and then come back out and have his son. That type of shot where you're like, oh damn, he just went in there and possibly killed them, if not broke a couple bones or something. But no, he just talks to them about being a father, and they agree to it. Which I do like the things that he says. 
But then right before he walks out to say they're gonna give us our son back, Soren's wife sees a little helmeted boy running across, calls their son's name, the boy stops, he takes the helmet off and it's not his kid. This is the most interesting to me because I empathize with their situation. It would absolutely suck to not be able to find your kid on one planet, let alone an entire galaxy. They then go back to the guy that gave them the information on where to find him. They find out that he sells information and traffics children for various reasons. So Soren's wife goes in and basically beats the information out of him. And they find out the UNSC took their son. Juan has two significant scenes where she's tisming out with the magic shit. And I hate the magic stuff in this universe. All I know is that she was tisming out. And something about being a protector. All right, let's breeze through the most confusing plot line of all. So early in the episode, McKee is looking at Reach burning, and she's crying about it. You should be dead. I hate you. But McKee's just staring at the camera, trolling all the people who thought she was dead and long gone, going, I've died before. The power of the Blessed One is a pathway to many abilities that some would consider unnatural. I still find it incredibly annoying that they have the aliens and McKee speaking Sangheili instead of English. But while watching, I developed a theory, and I think it's a tactic to have our minds and eyes on the subtitles and not watching the elites talk. Because the blur cutscenes for Halo 2 had far better looking visuals all over the place than the elites in this very expensive TV show. So I guess the Arbiter wanted to go back to high charity and tell the prophets and everyone that they fucked up. And he wanted to atone for his failures. And McKee is freaking out, and she tells him the prophets are false, they're gonna kill her. Which, the prophets being false, are something we don't find out until the end of Halo 2 when they betray the elites. A bloody fate awaits you and the rest of your incompetent race. And I, Tartarus, chieftain of the brutes, will send you to it. And the prophets learn of this. They will take your head when they learn. <laughs> Fool. They ordered me to do it. But I guess this short-haired bitch that's supposed to be dead knows that already in the Arbiter completely flipped from being a devout follower of the Prophets to fucking off with McKee to go find Halo. Like, the Arbiter's motivation just flips on a dime. A lot of the main players in this show are acting like Kylo Ren where they want one thing and then they want something else the next second and then it might flip-flop again. There's no point in speculating what any of these people or aliens or anybody want because they don't even know. I'm not kidding. One second the Arbiter wants to go back to the Prophets and he's a devout follower of the Covenant. And then McKee's like, nah. And then Cortana helps portray an image of Halo to the Arbiter. And the Arbiter thinks McKee is doing it for some reason, even though she hasn't shown herself to have any sort of powers like that and she wasn't touching any artifacts. And he's just like, all right, cool. I'm gonna follow you now, let's go to Halo. It was really weird. Like, I love the Covenant in Halo, the video game. I find a lot of the stuff going on and the alien side of things super interesting, their culture, their political system, all that. The world building in those games is incredible. I don't have any fucking clue what's going on here. We're moving on. The episode ends with Ty talking to Joseph Morgan, I mean Ackerson, and then walking outside and there's a shit ton of Spartan 3s that are training on Onyx, and I guess Kai is training them. I don't understand the timeline here. When did they augment these people? How long does augmentation for a Spartan 3 take? I actually don't know the answer for that in the game or the books. Like, I know the Spartan 2s had to do it at a super young age, so I don't understand how the Fall of Reach happened basically last week, and we already have a couple platoons of Spartan 3s. But that episode's over. We're going to episode 6 now. The episode opens with a bunch of Spartan 3s flying through space to a Covenant Corvette to assault the thing and all of them get fucked up. And Perez is there now, so I guess she left Reach. She flew civilians off of Reach after letting Admiral Keyes sacrifice himself. Arrives on Onyx somehow, which was the next destination, which is weird that they would fly straight to a planet like that because you wouldn't want to lead the Covenant to where you're going. They can follow you through hyperspace. But we're on Onyx now. When the Pillar of Autumn left Reach in Halo Reach, they did a blind jump. That's what they say in Combat Evolved. 
Because why would you jump back to Earth or another known human planet, knowing the Covenant can follow you? You wouldn't. But I guess Perez and a bunch of civilians landed on Onyx. I don't know what happened with the civilians. Nobody does. I don't even know how many ships made it off of Reach. And Perez is now a Spartan 3, or a Spartan 3 in training. I don't understand how any of this is happening right now. There's one scene, the Spartan 3 that's leading this group of Spartan 3s takes a knee, points her gun up to the ceiling of the hallway in the spaceship, and for some reason they edited in a muzzle flash, like it shot the ceiling, and I thought it was really funny. But anyways, all of the Spartan 3s die and they wake up, it was a simulation. They were training to assault a Covenant Corvette so that they can inject a virus into the computer system and shut it down. So they're ripping that straight out of Independence Day, which I find hilarious. Because one of the main criticisms of that movie is the fact that a computer virus would work to that degree, but whatever. I'm thoroughly convinced when shows like this do that, it's so that they can have micro action scenes with no consequences. Afterwards, Kai and Perez get into it for a little bit. Perez says something about Kai not being on reach for the final fight. And Kai tells Perez that because she was in one battle, it doesn't make her a veteran. Perez responds with, it made her lucky. And then we pan to a picture of John 117 saying, don't let his sacrifice be in vain. They're using Chief's supposed death for propaganda. We had a shitty buildup between Humans vs. Covenant in episodes 1, 2, and 3. Then we had the Fall of Reach happen in one episode, and it was the worst episode so far of the season because of the degrees of bad. And now we're setting up a plot line where it's John vs. Oni because Oni fucked him over. John Halo and Quan Halo are now going to sneak into Oni to confront Perengoski. John decides to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with a bunch of UNSC or Oni soldiers and magically doesn't get shot and I don't think he kills anybody and then a whole bunch more come out of nowhere and arrest him. And then Quan starts tripping balls and falls down a well and then before she hits the bottom she starts floating and then Halsey's just standing down there like Gollum. I'm going to go ahead and follow this plot line to the end because I don't want to talk about it again. So Quan and Halsey start walking around in a cave and she's like, I used to work down here. Oh, this wall looks different. She comes across her daughter, Miranda Keys, which pains me to say it because the video game Miranda Keys was so much cooler. But she comes across her who's being a little scientist with all of her little scientists in this cave and they're studying stuff. And they picked up these studies from where Dr. Halsey left it off and they have some banter and that's pretty much it. Now back to our amazing John Halo who has been captured by Oni and then the girl from the third episode comes in and is like, remember me? And they talk shit to each other. And then John, of course he does because he's a Spartan, fucks up all of the Oni soldiers and gets out of there. Then he sneaks around in the most cartoonishly Scooby-Doo-esque way through the Oni base, like putting a hand over his face or awkwardly turning around and walking the opposite direction when somebody could be looking at him. Like nobody would ever notice that or notice how awkwardly he's doing stuff and be like, hey, can I help you? Oh my gosh, it's you. Ikerson convinces Kai that John may be working with McKee so she goes to stop him and she beats the living shit out of him and he doesn't do a single thing to stop it. He seemed pretty hell-bent on getting revenge and doing all the stuff he wanted to do, but because Kai is standing in his way, he loses all conviction and just lets her royally fuck him up. It's pretty pathetic. You were dead set and had a goal five minutes ago, but now because Kai's in your way, you're not going to punch her one time. I mean, you don't stand a chance, if we're being totally honest, because she's fully armored up, but... Come on, man. Okay, I can't talk about the Oni stuff until I go talk about the Covenant stuff for a little bit. We have a scene where this priest elite comes up and starts questioning the Arbiter's loyalty to the Covenant, and then literally says something about killing McKee, and after the Arbiter calms him down and he walks away, the first thing McKee said was, the priest is suspicious. Yeah, no fucking shit, Sherlock. He literally just said it to you guys. Moving on, we have a scene where Cortana is teaching McKee how to do Blessed One-tisms. Not sure why she's doing that. And I'm really not sure why this show is still trying to make us sympathetic to McKee. I will never like her. She is a horrible person. The fact that you keep trying to sell her as this tragic, potential good guy is pretty odd. 
and makes me question your moral compass. Okay, now we have to go back to Oni for a little bit, and then we can end this talking about the Covenant again. We find out that Parangoski arranged for Cortana's capture to be an undercover agent in the Covenant. That's not how AIs are used, but I guess this isn't the right universe. Oni, your levels of confidence are mind-blowing. You have an artificial intelligence who's supposed to be the next step in AI evolution. You let her go into enemy hands with the location of Earth and all other human occupied planets and all of our military strategies everything you let them have her with no guarantee you'll ever get her back well cortana starts talking to parangoski from however the fuck far away i'm assuming they're traveling at slip space but i guess she can just communicate with them no matter how far away or how fast they're traveling around the time she's talking to parangoski she also starts talking to John Halo and tells him he needs to get up. And she starts controlling doors and lights and all sorts of things so that John can walk through the facility untouched by security. And he's smiling and acting all smug and it's fucking weird and I hated it. I hated every second of it. So now going back to the Covenant, the priest guy and a bunch of elites show up and say that they picked up on a transmission from their ship to Onyx, which I guess they know is a human settlement but if you know that why haven't you gone and glassed the whole okay whatever immediately calls out mckee so then the arbiter says if you're with me you're with me if you're not whatever and then they all start fighting mckee's rolling around on the floor trying not to die the fight scene was pretty shit because you're basically watching the elites from waist down moving around and you get a couple shots of them slicing stuff you don't know who's on whose side you don't know why anybody's following anybody i'm currently on priest guy's side in this situation but the arbiter ends up winning with his group of elites and that's that i guess we cut back to john halo on onyx he touches the keystone and the screen cuts to black so i'm assuming he jizzed again and that's the end of the episode like i mentioned at the beginning of the video i actually don't know what's happening right now i have a very strong feeling that the next couple episodes are not going to clear anything up for me I understood what was happening in 4, and I could point out logistically why things were broken. But episode 5 took the show in a direction... I can't follow! I've heard a little bit here and there about how bad the finale is, so I'm actually kind of excited to get to that so I can review it. I'm very shocked, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, but this show has hit a point where I'm trying to decide if season 2 is worse than season 1. I remember in episode 1, I said it was better than season 1, but still garbage. There seem to be genuine attempts to improve on things like dialogue, plot, all that stuff in episode 1. But it just fell off of a cliff multiple times. And now I don't know which one's worse. But that's gonna wrap it up for me today. I'm gonna watch episode 7 next, review that, and then the finale. And then I can put all of this behind me and move on to some other things. I would like to praise some stuff next. I'm getting kind of tired of just ripping on episode after episode. I'd like to be positive about something. Thank you all for watching this video. You could have been anywhere in the world doing anything, but you're here with me, listening to me bitch about the Halo TV series, and I appreciate that. Have a wonderful Easter, and I'll catch you in the next video. Uh, perhaps we should take a break. I could really use a nap. Mm.